is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, Larry Pesavento. Okay, folks, I'm going to talk about something that uh, every time I used to give these really big talks, I mean, back in the old days when it would be two or 300 people from the Money Show and other places, the, one of the big questions that came up would always be, you know, what you're doing, stock uh, trading is exactly like gambling. And gosh, folks, it has nothing to do with the same thing, folks. Gambling is when you are making a bet on something that they take a percentage out of the take. In other words, if you go into a casino, remember that the two worst bets that you can make are Kino. They take out 17% right off the top. The next best, uh, the, the best bet is Baccarat at point. Uh, zero two one or whatever it is. Blackjack is about five percent. Craps is about seven percent. Roulette's about ten percent. But they're all about the same thing. Poker is different. Poker, you pay a fee for each hand that's dealt, which is about uh, figures out to about seventy five cents on a nine handed game playing four eight. So that's you know very minimal. When you're trading a stock, when you buy it or sell it, you can get out of it immediately. You have control over it. And a gambling game is not the same. In a gambling game, you make the bet, whether it's a roll of the dice, spin of the wheel, toss of the ball, blow of the whistle, whatever it happens to be. Once that has done, you don't get to do anything until the game is over. Now, those of you that watch television or follow any sports betting at all or any of the betting things, you'll know that their betting has gone absolutely ballistic. It looks like an AI chart that they're betting on everything. Even on little casinos here in Tucson, they have huge big beautiful uh, buildings here that you know bring in people are standing in line you know making bets and when they do that the bookies they take 10 percent in other words if you pay a hundred dollars to win a hundred dollars there you're going to bet a hundred but you're only going to get 90 back because they take 10 percent and of course at halftime you can make another bet and there's all kinds of proposition bets but that's what gambling is all about when you play a slot machine on the front of that slot machine it'll say it should say, but it doesn't. You have no chance of ever beating me long term, and I've taken in $1.2 million and I've given out. But slot machine payouts are anywhere from 85 to 98%. A 98% payout pays very little on wins. In other words, if you might get three sevens on a on a 2% a payout, you're probably only going to win $100. But if it's an 85% payout, you might have $1,000. Now, horse racing is a little another difference. Horse racing takes 16%, just like Kino, okay? And that's, uh, that's the name of the game. But anyway, when you go into a racetrack to bet, uh, that's what they do. If you go into the race betting places in Las Vegas, we have two of them here in Tucson, Arizona. They book about 50 tracks around the United States and uh, South America and also in Japan. And uh, what they're doing is, is they're all about numbers. That's all it is. Racetrack is like football, baseball. All these things are based on numbers. They know in baseball, if a pitcher, uh, you know, is three and two, the odds of him waking, uh, walking that batter or su or such and such. All those numbers are in there, and we're doing the same thing. Now, what I do, and this is the answer to the question. So, what do I do when I play the horses? I don't play the horses. I play. The horse's jockey's agent. In other words, whatever the jockey is, I pick the four best jockeys at the track at that time, and I find out you know, who their agent is. That's all online, and I find out the agent is booking the horses for the jockey. The jockey is just the instrument. Now, stop and think. If you're, if you're an agent, you do not want to put that jockey on a horse that doesn't at least have a chance at winning because he's your source of income. Is that correct? That's real simple to figure that out. So you pick the four best jockeys, okay, and then what you do is you bet the horses when whatever the race is. If you've got those four jockeys in the race, you can bet those four jockeys. Now, if you notice here, this was the race here on the 23rd, Saturday. You'll notice if you made a 10-cent bet that the 6, 10, 4, and 8 came in at that order, that 10-cent bet paid $25,515 on a 10-cent bet. Now, what I do, let's say my jockeys were 6, 
10, 4, and 8. I box all four of those. So if I box that bet, okay, instead of being a 10 cent bet, it's going to cost me $12 because there's 120 different ways this could this could work out. But I still would have won $25,000 on a, on a $12 bet. I did not make this bet. I'm just showing you the, the way to try to find good value, and that's what you're doing. You're betting on the jockey's agent, not the jockey's. Doesn't make any difference, you know, what that happens to be. I, one of my most memorable stories in Los Angeles, I've told this many times, I'll tell it again. We were at the track with the uh, first time I'd ever met Jack Warner of Warner Brothers, and we were with Nate Cohen and Eddie Horowitz. And there was a horse out there called um, Guide Tour, and he was 90 to 1. And I said, I, and I don't know, I mean, this is 1972. I, I still don't know anything, but I, I know even less back then. And I said, I like that horse at 90 to 1. And Nate Cohen says, why don't you just throw the money out on the track and let the jockey's uh, uh, trainers pick it up and stuff. And and Jack Warner said, uh, kid, he said, let me tell you something. He said, there's not one horse out there that knows how to read. He said it in a more, uh, if you can imagine, expletive uh, explanation that had the F word in it. And he said, uh, none of them can read. He said, he doesn't know. He, he, he thinks he's man of war. And uh, anyway, the horse did win. He paid 90 to 1, and I got the nickname Longshot because of that. But now what I do is I don't get to bet that often. See, these, these particular situations, none of my horses were in this type of race. But, folks, later in the week, I had two of these. This was on yesterday. I had two of all four jockeys were in a race like this, and I missed hitting up not nothing like 12000 It was more like 4000 But for a $12 bet, I missed 4000 bucks by about a foot and a half. So that, that was good value and good value betting. Now, if you don't think that you're trading against these algorithmic traders out there that are doing this stuff all along, you're being really naive. Believe me. They know these computer numbers. You can see them all day long. I mean, do they work all the time? Of course they don't. But at major points, pay very, very close attention to these numbers because these people know what these numbers are. They came from, you know, the, the financial engineering out of uh, MIT with uh, Dr. Uh, Andrew Lowe and, and other places that, uh, you know, uh, uh, G.B. Shaw and stuff like that. And Renaissance Commodity with Jim Simmons, I mean, they, they know what these numbers are. So all we try to do is add what those numbers are and say, okay, this is where we find value and this is what we're, what we're trying to look at. So that's what I'm trying to get to you each day when I'm sharing with you some of these things uh, that we're watching. Now, our guest today will be Shane Smullyan uh, at the break. And uh, to, the, later on this week, we're going to have uh, Stan Harley on. And as I mentioned before, I won't be here on Thursday because I received a free ticket to go to Los Angeles to see the Arizona Wildcats. I got a ticket to the game. I got to get over there somehow. I'll probably hitchhike or take a train, but I'll get over there somehow. And then, But the ticket's worth about 400 bucks. And so I'm going to see the game on Thursday. And uh, I don't have a ticket for Saturday, so I'll just see Thursday's game. And then I will uh, come back through Palm Springs and probably stop and see Paula Webb. And have dinner with her or something. But anyway, that's what I just won't be here on Thursday, so that's what we're paying attention to here this morning. I want to go a few a few other charts here uh, today that are very important because we hit some type of a ma minor high. It may be a big high. I don't know in the stock market, but let's pay attention here. Okay, eight seven seven nine two seven six six four eight. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, Education. Investors. 
The stock market is a delicate interconnecting web of commodities, equities, and trader psychology. When one string of the web is pulled, it has a ripple effect across the broader market. This is where opportunity lies. But how are you to gather all of this information into one cohesive model when you're already spending your energy looking for any possible trade opportunities? Luckily, you don't have to worry about that, as Tom O'Brien has brought all important market news to you in one single newsletter, Market Insights. Market Insights provides a daily overview of what's happening in the indexes, bonds, gold, and more. Follow along with Tom daily as he analyzes the components that affect the overall movement of the stock market, giving insight into how each one plays either a bullish or bearish role. Tom also analyzes specific equities that he believes has the potential to make huge returns, and his track record proves his analysis right. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee, so what are you waiting for? Don't let the market leave you in the dust. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk, so why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Okay, folks, I posted a chart here of May wheat, and this red line that you see is my uh, neural network uh, artificial intelligence. Uh, basically, it was a beginning thing way back in the early 90s that I got from uh, Dennis Regan and Jim Twentyman and I worked on this. And what we did when Dennis died right after we started doing this stuff, so we had to reconstruct everything ourselves. We bought a MIPS computer, which means min... min, min Millions of integers per second. Yeah, M-I-P-S, millions of integers per second. And it would go back, and if you'd ask it questions, you could still do that, say, what is the most common swing in something, and it would give you what that was. And then they would also look at the most common times on the day. So that's what this little red line does, is it picks out what this done in the past, and you'll notice here for the first half of the day, it's worked perfectly. And since that time, you know, it's been coming straight down. But the reason why I'm bringing this one up is because today's one of the trades that we were suggesting in the videos that we sent out last night. We'll just switch over here to the hourly chart here on the uh, wheat. And you'll notice that we were making a beautiful, let's just get this up here so we can see it really clear. We want to thank Miss TS over there in uh, Scottsdale, Arizona, for the heads up on this one. But you'll notice here we have a beautiful typical. Now, remember, everything we do is ABCD. And we'll get this. There's your ABCD leg, and it comes right up here at uh, 63. There's your ABCD number. The high was 67. We're now trading 15 cents lower at 51. So that's, that's all that was. All that timing thing did was to say, yeah, we'll take a look at it at that time. Now, what I'm going to be doing here, you might be interested, is – Every other Friday, starting on April the 12th, I'm going to be doing three hours of live trading. TFNN said we've had lots of requests to do this live trading and it's for people to make money, do a tiny bit of teaching, but it's there to make money. And that's what we're going to be doing every Friday, every other Friday, starting on April the 12th, for as long as my energy level holds out. It's three hours is a piece of cake, folks. And then just every other week is really no big deal. And if it helps a few people, you know, that's really great. So here's a heads up, something that really looks interesting. May or may not happen, but let's take a quick look at it here. Here is the E-mini S&P from the high that we made way back here three or four months ago at March 21st. Well, that was Friday. Anyway, you'll notice... 
no, was that Friday? No, that was uh, Thursday, wasn't it? Twenty first. Yeah, Thursday was the twenty first, and then here's Friday, and then there's the number. The low of the day is right here. Okay, now you've gone down from uh, twenty. Let's call that fifty three twenty five. It's dropped fifty handles. Okay, now on the first way. Now here we had a little bit here on Sunday. Uh, let's see what was this? This was Friday close. The market rallied back to this level right here. This has been the strongest rally, and so you assume that that's going to be the first ABCD. So your first ABCD would measure there, and where does it come down to? Uh, right almost exactly the low of the day. Now, you think these algorithmic traders don't understand this kind of stuff, but here's the one that you want to pay attention to. If this is, in fact, the big high, may or may not be, pay really a close attention here. Let's move up to a 13 minutes so we can see it. There's where it is. You see a little red, little red arrow that's there? That's where the order is. Oh, you've got to change it just a tiny bit because we did make it a little bit lower low. We want to try to be as accurate as possible here in uh, futures land there's the 3a2 comes in here oh it's almost right on the money right there at 91 so watch that hold on move it over there watch that as a potential for a uh, sale and your stop has got to be you got it the way the market's jumping now you've got to risk 20 handles so that would take you up to uh, 5311 which would be right above this level here so you would lose 20 points on that but if you're right you got an A, B, C, D that's got 50 handles in it. So you're risking, no, it's more than that. Wow, it's got 100 handles. So you're risking, uh, you're risking 20 handles to make 100 handles. So that's a, that's a pretty good, uh, pretty good re report, a return on, a return on investment. All right. Okay. Now we had another question. Uh, hold on a second. Where are we here? It's about the, not the corn, ah, treasury bonds. That was one of the ones that we talked about Friday. This had all the earmarks of a market that was ready to go lower. We had to get this up here on the uh, longer term picture because there's where we were. There was our 382 right here. Well, the 135 is off because we moved the chart around a little bit. There's one. Here's three. Here's five. Oopsie daisy, I got to move that out of the way. Five is, ah, get that out of the way here, move it. Five is right here. And just move this up for a little bit. And the 382 on this came in here at uh, right right here at 21. Our stop was uh, right above here. So that's working uh, actually pretty good. If you look at this real closely, and we will do that right now on the 60 minute, you'll see that we made that beautiful ABCD, ABCD right there at this level. In fact, the number was uh, 120.05. And I can see we're coming down. We're at the 382 right now. So this is a, looks like it's failing, though, because we're already below it by just a tick or two. But uh, that if, the, if bonds are really bullish, they're not going to get much lower than this. But I think we're going to at least do what this did, and we're almost there right now because these markets repeat over and over again. It should bring it to right there. All right, let's write 4904. So we're going to go back over here. And put this back where it belongs, and we're going to see if that 4904 is going to be right at the 61% retracement. And there it is, right here. So you think these algorithmic traders don't do this? I mean, if an old, an old uh, war dog like myself out of Terre Haute, Indiana, can figure out some of this stuff, you bet these guys that have master's degree from uh, all these fancy places and doctorates and stuff, they can figure it out. And they got all the computer power. Oh, I don't have that, folks. All I, all I got is a little pencil and a proportional divider and a calculator. That's all I got, but sometimes that's all you need. You want to keep it as uh, simple as possible. Question about Tesla. Does it ever have a bottom? Yes, it does, but it's quite a bit lower. Let's get this up here to take a quick look at it here. We're actually bouncing a little bit today, and uh, but I still believe with a strong conviction that we are going down here for Tesla, which is at 116. We got 60 points to go before we're going to get down here. There's at 1.618. We're having this little bit of a move here. Even look at this, folks. This is how bearish this darn thing is. There's your 382 right here. Look at this little pattern right here. Let's just assume that some good news comes out on Tesla and it makes a nice little pattern like this. Your AB right at your 382 would be right about there. See, making a new high. That would be up about 182, something like that. And then what you're going to do is from that level, you're going to make another A, B, C, D heading down to this level. The only way this can become bullish, folks, 
is if we start getting up here at around 195, in other words, retrace more than 70, 78% of this move right here, that would tell us, uh-oh, something seriously wrong with this analysis. So that means if we get above 195 in Tesla, not a good idea. Now, the good news is you're done listening to ABCDs, and in just a few short minutes after a few commercials, we're going to be listening to the wolf trader himself, Shane Smolian. So please stay tuned, and let's hope that I got the clock working today the right way. Usually I don't, and I got 38 seconds left, unfortunately. Let's make a little commercial then. Uh, tomorrow, uh, I believe we have Stan Harley is going to be our guest. Uh, hopefully, we're going to have uh, Bill Meridian coming up. His birthday is coming up real soon, so we want to have him on for his birthday. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African RAND, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. If you spend any time online researching trading techniques on how to begin your trading journey, you've no doubt come across many folks who push Forex trading as a way to make big money quickly. Unfortunately, there are equally as many stories of these so-called Forex professionals just looking to make a quick buck off aspiring traders without actually teaching the ins and outs of the Forex market. This is what sets Teddy Kekstack's The Tiger Forex Report off the riffraff. Every Monday, former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member and author Teddy Kekstad releases his Tiger Forex Report newsletter, where he dives into the complex world of Forex and takes time to actually teach you his methods that have made him so successful in the fast-paced and rewarding world of Forex trading. Furthermore, all subscribers receive access to archived live streams of Teddy's, where he provides university-level education to help you in Forex trading. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Forex awaits. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento, a pro's pro with over 50 years of experience. Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the newsletters tab. This portion of Trade What You See is brought to you by Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the direction. Visit Direction.com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC.
believe we have the wolf trader himself in the house, Shane Smolian. How are you, my friend? Is this Duke and Duke? 100 South Broad Street, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, Suite 604, 618, excuse oh, right. me. <laughs> Go ahead, buddy. What are you looking at today? Well, I thought I'd give a little bit of a, an around-the-world perspective here. I'm going to give talk about different topics today, but real first, before we get started, I, I want to make a quick disclaimer to everybody out there, trading commodity futures involves substantial risk of loss. Past performances are not necessarily indicative of future results. The discussions and forecasts provided today are not to be construed as trading advice or equivalent to actual trades. Trading is something completely different. And so live trades for the week are evaluated every Sunday during our Zoom session, reflecting real trades and auto trading accounts. So today, these are not trades. This is just an overview. So I just want to kind of make that clear from the beginning. All right, we good? I have a question. Well, a question is, would you start law school or something last week or what? <laughs> no, just always better to disclose from the beginning. So, you, you, think these people, you think these people out here don't already know that kind of stuff? It's, it's, it, it can't hurt to say it again. So Okay, all right. Well, I, I respect your opinion, however wrong it may be, as Abraham Lincoln once said. No, I, I, I agree with what you have to do because I, I, my number in the CFTC is number 75. That was back in 1975 when they first started. We didn't have any of that stuff. It wasn't oh, wow. until much later that we had it. So please continue. I'm sorry to take up your time, so please start. No okay, so I'm going to talk about some economy comments here. Just some broad perspectives. I'm not going to get too too deep into things, but in general, the, the global economy is in a, a slowdown phase right now, except some of these wartime economies. So we have Russia, United States, we have UK. A lot of these countries that are involved in the war are having these these engines going from the war, but certain countries aren't, like Germany has no no ability to, to, to participate in that. So we're seeing this global slowdown. We're also seeing the a lot of these the data that comes in, the jobs, the consumer data, it's being revised lower at record rates. So 90% plus of these numbers are, are being revised lower. So it's kind of a confusing time because there's a lot of cross currents going on. But the one thing I just want to point out is that these numbers are not being randomly, you know, up one month, down one month. They're always being revised down. Uh, and we're having a divergence in the, the top line strength of the non-farm payrolls and then the household survey, which is showing weakness. So it's, it's a confusing time because one's going up, one's going down. Um, we did see the largest layoffs in February since 2009, so that's a real thing, uh, and you know we haven't seen it yet show up in the numbers. And you know, part of that is probably that there are some packages, some severance packages that could go for a couple of months before those people hit the the unemployment. But that's a true thing, and that's that's actually happening. Uh, so a lot of these countries, global countries, are in recession right now. UK, Japan, Ireland, Finland, Germany, and Germany is getting really hit hard because of the pipeline issue and also because they're not really participating in the wartime efforts. Um, and we have this inflation risk that, you know, right now we're having this, this whole issue with the, the supply side of it, the who these, uh, the, the Suez Canal, the Pan, I don't know if people know this, the Panama Canal is having issues because there's a drought. Uh, and so the, the shipping traffic through there is lower. Uh, and, and so, you know, the, the biggest risk right now, I, in my view, is gonna be government stimulus. So as the economy slows down, you know, as the the stimulus increases, this can keep the the inflation uh, up a little bit elevated. Also, the CRE is a building issue, which is commercial real estate. So this is a, a map here. Uh, I got this from um, uh, India India Today Group. This is showing the economies around the world. They're all slowing down. Uh, not all of them, but a lot of them are slowing down. So you can see just you know, from Canada, Colombia, Ecuador, Iceland, Ireland, Romania, Germany, uh, Luxembourg, South Africa, Denmark, Finland. We're starting to see these slowdowns show up, and some of these are the first, you know, the first quarter slowdown. Some of these have actually been two two consecutive quarters. So this is something that's a trend. It's happening, and so I don't think we can escape this. So that's that's kind of the glow, the the, the growing backdrop of, of what's going on. We also have this New York Community Bank Corps, which was uh, heavily involved with the commercial real estate. This stock was collapsing. And they had that bailout that came in, so they came in with a bailout. But a lot of these banks are st are starting to show signs of stress from the commercial real estate. And talking with people on the ground, the situation's getting worse, not better. So uh, this stuff is out there, it's just kind of in the background. I just kind of wanted to give that as a backdrop. Um, we have record sentiment in terms of the fear and greed, and this is a crypto indicator here. Uh, this is still pushing at 75% greed, even with that pullback in Bitcoin. And then the, the S&P is still pushing near 70%. So that's pretty high 
So we have this whole bubble going on one side, and then we have the, the real economic slowdown uh, around the world happening. And then, of course, we have the war going on. So um, that's kind of the backdrop. Now, let's talk about the geomagnetic storms here. So we've talked about these storms from time to time on the show. Um, we are in the peak geomagnetic storm season. So right now, this is the time when these storms come off the sun with fury. Uh, and so far, the season has been very quiet. This month was very quiet. But last night, out of the blue, and it wasn't forecast, we had a G3 storm pass over, a G2 and a G3 storm pass over. Uh, and I do expect more of these to pass in the next two to three months. So this is a, this is would be perceived as a negative for the markets. Every time that these storms come across, uh, they do generally, on average, have negative effects on the markets, particularly the Russell. Uh, so this was the forecast from last night. And it just I woke up this morning and it was just here. It wasn't even forecast. All of a sudden there was a G3 storm, 6.67, which is pretty high on the KP scale. So um, this this is I expect this activity to pick up. Uh, if you take a look at the seasonal pattern here, uh, we are in we are into March here. We're at a peak season here and it's been very slow right the first part, three weeks of the month so i do expect this to pick up and then april is also going to be an intense month for geomagnetic storms and may is still high it's still almost 3.5 storms per month so we're still we still have at least at least two and a half months here still of these storms that can come off of the sun and they do have uh, they do have a negative impact on the market so i just want to let everybody know that that's just kind of where we are in the seasonal pattern and but it has been very quiet uh, and these storms do do kind of move at an inverse fashion to the market. So as these storms increase, uh, the, the solar cycle of the Dow Jones runs inverted to these. And so, you know, it's inter it's an interesting correlation here. So, and we know that these storms are neg have negative activity and the markets do tend to fall. And when these fall, the markets tend to rise. So it's, it's an inverted relationship there. So uh, Shane, didn't yes. the Federal Reserve, they published a paper about that stuff. They did. This is where I got the. Yeah, I got this oh, is where I'm getting yeah. this, this data from. The data that I'm showing you guys yeah. is from – that's a good point, Larry. The reason, the reason why I know that is, you know, they sent me the paper and made sure that I made the corrections that were necessary. And, of course, I did. And so they published it. So once, once you signed off on it, it was, it was it Yeah, was once go, I right? signed off of that Federal Reserve <laughs> paper coming out of Atlanta, you know, they said, yes, I guess it's okay. And how do you do that uh, that non-disclosure thing you just talked about so we won't have to go to jail together? <laughs> Go ahead, my friend. Keep going. Hey, we got to pay, right. pay a few bills here, so let's wait sure. and see what we're doing here as far as the bill paying is going. We only got 35 seconds. Keep going. Okay, I'll keep going. So let's talk about some Fed notes here. So uh, very quickly, the Fed internals are still falling uh -oh. here. They've been. We'll be back. Uh, we'll I'll, be back. I'll be back. Okay, we'll be back. Stay with us. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening call subscribers also receive access to dozens of Basil's educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. The stock market is a delicate interconnecting web of commodities, equities, and trader psychology. When one string of the web is pulled, it has a ripple effect across the broader market. This is where opportunity lies. But how are you to gather all of this information into one cohesive model when you're already spending your energy looking for any possible trade opportunities? Luckily, you don't have to worry about that as Tom O'Brien has brought all important market news to you in one single newsletter, Market Insights. Market Insights provides a daily overview of what's happening in the indexes, bonds, gold, and more. Follow along with Tom daily as he analyzes the components that affect the overall movement of the stock market 
giving insight into how each one plays either a bullish or bearish role. Tom also analyzes specific equities that he believes has the potential to make huge returns, and his track record proves his analysis right. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Don't let the market leave you in the dust. For traders who crave risk, Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs provide opportunities to magnify short-term perspectives with up to three times a daily leverage, utilize bull and bear funds from both sides of the trade, and trade through rapidly changing markets. These are highly leveraged ETFs with daily resetting designed for short-term trading, not long-term investing. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. For up-to-date pricing and performance, go to Direction. Dot com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Okay, we're back, folks. Speaking with Shane Smolian, the Wolf Trader, please continue, my friend. Okay, so quick Fed notes here. I just want to give a backdrop. The Fed internals are still falling with quantitative tightening. That has not changed. Uh, but a lot of these programs are, are winding down, So, or two of them are. One of them, the bank, the bank term funding program has closed, and the banks are going to need to start paying back these loans. So I think we're going to start to see this over the next month, start to see this play out. And this is going to bring significant stress to the financial system. Also, the reverse repo is winding down. So the, rever the reverse repo was a situation where, you know, when you do a reverse repo, you're selling now. Uh, you, know, you're, you, you say, I sell now, and then you sell later. And so the Fed was selling and gathering the cash. And it tracked these outflows and inflows of the banks, uh, and so the the Fed was able to track this, which was good because they could see what how much the banks needed the money back or, or whatnot. Uh, and these flows created this very screwy data. You, do you remember when everybody showed these charts of M2 crashing, and they were like, "It's never happened before," like in the last few months? Oh, I think yeah. I had some guessing. A lot of that has to do with this reverse repo. It it, it it makes it seem as if the M2 is disappearing, but it's really just moving over to the reverse repo facility. But it creates these bizarre graphs where it looks like the m2 is crashing where it's just kind of moving to the fed and then it can kind of it can kind of go right back and they had this arbitrage situation where they were getting a little bit of extra interest so they moved all their money there uh but now that they're they're moving it back into the system so when it goes into the reverse repo it's leaving the financial system and when it, when it goes out it's coming back so right now what's happening is as this closes it's going to be harder to track what the banks need they're basically kind of they can kind of monitor how much the banks need that money and so that's closing so these are all kind of backdrops in terms of just this the situation so there are some tight tightening measures going on now the S&P uh, is rising into a series of falling cycles and fed use uh, and again several of these programs are in, ending which I think will put pressure on the S&P we have negative Astro late in the month into April uh, we did have that high on the tw uh, last week where Venus was conjunct Saturn now, interestingly, last night we had a lunar eclipse. Now, usually there's about 10 days of negative events after the lunar eclipse, and we had the surprise G3 storm last night. In addition, we have Mercury Station on April the 1st, and plus or minus three days around it. If the market is selling off, it has a risk of dislocation. So there are some – there's a setup here. We'll see. Well, there's a setup here for this market to roll over in the near term. Uh, and then, again, the super buyer rhythms are falling. I'm going to talk about that in a second. Uh, but this is this is a, a graph here of the S&P versus the Fed internals. You can see the Fed internals are still falling here. And there hasn't been a single time since 2009 where the market has not retraced back to these. It's taking a long time, but I do think we are going to retrace and come back here. Uh, and so we have all types of divergences going on, too. We have the RSI has a neg double negative divergence here. And so I do think that this is still a, uh, a bearer setup for the S&P going forward. Uh, the Russell, we have a non-confirmation on the Russell, a bearish non-confirmation. The Russell has not really rallied past that December point uh, as the S&P has. It rallied up on October and then it just kind of stalled out here. So I always talk about that because, you know, the Russell needs to be moving with these markets to confirm it. Now, the lunar eclipse, 
these this lunar eclipse, if you look at the Dow Jones, it does tend to fall. So the lunar eclipse was last night. This does tend to fall for about 10 days. And usually this is preceding a solar eclipse, which is coming next month. But we have about 10 days here of down on this uh, typically. And this is a very strong astro signature. So, I mean, this is, this is a good one. I mean, if you look at a lot of these signatures, that the lunar eclipses tend to be negative events for markets, and they tend to last for about 10 days. Plus, we got that solar storm last night. So we'll see uh, how this affects the markets. Now, I want to talk about these super biorhythms. The super biorhythms are a series of, of uh, these longer-term biorhythms that I've built. And I want to show you a forecast model here. Now, these super biorhythms, these are, these are long-term forecast models, and this is covid and COVID-19. And so you can see the super biorhythm here. We have the long-term black movement here, and then we have the red one here, which is a medium term. The reason that this was interesting during COVID was because both of these were aligned to the downside. So you can see here that the longer term uh, biorhythm was falling here and the medium term was falling here. When both of those fall together, you have a much sharper chance of the market declining quickly. And the market did defy these for quite a while. And then at the very, very end, it came back down here and made this big sell-off during the COVID-19 situation. Why am I showing you COVID-19 when we're in 2024? I mean, everybody's sick of that, right? Well, the reason is that we have a very similar setup right now. Uh, we have both of these biorhythms on the on the move to the downside, and they're both in agreement down. So you have the medium term falling here, and you also have the long term super biorhythm falling here. So I just wanted to point that out that that's that's happening right now, and so I do think that that is going to eventually start to weigh on this market. Um, gold, I'll talk about gold real quick here. Gold recently has been choppy to these new recent highs. Um, it rose up with the biorhythm, and so now we do have a sinking biorhythm on the other side. Uh, the quad lunar made a high on 321, and there's there's still this correlation of gold to the yen. So if we look at the, the, the gold situation here, the, the, the quad lunar cycle makes a high here on 321, and so that's pretty much right when that high occurs on the gold chart here, on the daily chart. But what's interesting is if we go over to the super biorhythms here, what you can see here is that there's a few biorhythms here to follow. So let me just kind of train your eye here. First of all, you have the long-term biorhythm falling here on gold. Okay. But on these two medium-term ones, you can see these both came to the upside and it drew up gold. It followed this beautifully here. Gold kind of sat here and there was one more here that drew it up here. You can see that it drew it up and now they're all lining up to the downside. So I do think that gold's going to be headed down here for some time, probably into into April, not that long, maybe another month or so. And then we'll have, it might have the next opportunity for a high, but these super biorhythms have done a very good job of tracking these markets. And so this is a new tool that I'm, I'm bringing in as a forecasting model. Now, one of the things that we talk about all the time is the fact that gold and the Japanese yen tend to move together. They have a very nice correlation here. And I, I, be, I believe I talked to you about this before one other time. But the one thing that's interesting here is you can see the Japanese yen continues to show weakness, even though they tried to, you know, they tried to go the other way in terms of interest rates. It, it did not want to go up. They, and technically, when you're going up in interest rates, you should have a strengthening currency. That didn't happen. So as long as the yen is weak, I got to think that in the short term here, gold has a potential for some type of a small pullback. Now, let's talk about corn. This is a setup. Larry, you've been talking about the beans for a while, right? You've been looking into the soybeans. Yep. Um, so I do think there's an opportunity coming here in corn with some major a major biorhythm low. Uh, I'm waiting for an alignment on the charts, but there's four biorhythms bottoming right now, and then there's a larger one coming out into December. So this suggests that we have a near-term bounce uh, with some lower lows maybe coming in the winter. So this is this is a view of corn with the super biorhythms here. So you can see that corn is the super biorhythm is falling and it's on the rise now. And so uh, I do think that there's a chance this might come back and make one more leg down, maybe a little bit lower. I'm trying to I'm going to try to time this in the next week or two uh, with our platinum subscribers. But then I think it's got a chance for a rally. Now, the question is, is this going to be the big bottom or the big rally? A lot of the commercial positions are, are ramping up right now on on the grains. Uh, but I do want to point out a bigger super buyer with them here on the corn. Uh, so this is where we are right now, this this black line right here. But there's an even larger super buy rhythm out here and both of these bottom out here in December. So I do think there's a chance we will get a bounce here for the next. It could be a few months. But then ultimately, I do think there's a chance that we'll see lower prices here 
uh, heading into this December period. So I would just, you know, I don't know if this is the, the bottom, but on a short term, it, it could be. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento, a pro's pro with over 50 years of experience. Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the Newsletters tab. The stock market is a delicate interconnecting web of commodities, equities, and trader psychology. When one string of the web is pulled, it has a ripple effect across the broader market. This is where opportunity lies. But how are you to gather all of this information into one cohesive model when you're already spending your energy looking for any possible trade opportunities? Luckily, you don't have to worry about that, as Tom O'Brien has brought all important market news to you in one single newsletter, Market Insights. Market Insights provides a daily overview of what's happening in the indexes, bonds, gold, and more. Follow along with Tom daily as he analyzes the components that affect the overall movement of the stock market, giving insight into how each one plays either a bullish or bearish role. Tom also analyzes specific equities that he believes has the potential to make huge returns, and his track record proves his analysis right. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Don't let the market leave you in the dust. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. Okay, we're back, folks, and I think we have Mr. Shane Smolian, the WolfTrader.com, continuing on. Thank you. So I, just to everybody out there, I promise if I don't finish today, we'll go over this on Saturday in the webinar. I, I don't think we're going to finish all this material. But anyway, let's talk about Bitcoin. Um, people are very, very bullish on Bitcoin right now. And the sentiment is so high. And, you know, people are feeling there's just no way it can go down. And it's just there's limited supply. And they go into all of this jargon about it. Um, I have to disagree with that a little bit. I, I have this super buy rhythm here. You can see this is making a major topping pattern here in Bitcoin. And this does fall for much of the remainder of 2024. So I do think there's a good chance that Bitcoin, uh, based on these cycles, and if the S&P does start to move to the downside, we do have a history here of Bitcoin leading the S&P and following the S&P. So if the S&P rolls over, I do think there's a good chance that Bitcoin will stall out and roll down with it. Now, of course, we have this whole banking situation going on and people are nervous about that. And that's always a wild card. But from what I see here, um, I think there's a good chance that Bitcoin is going to be going to be heading down with S&P. So I don't I don't think Bitcoin's out of it for good. 
but I just think that the exuberance right now is is extreme and and it's very one sided in terms of how people feel about this. So I would just caution people about this that this is not a for sure thing. And within the ETF, I don't understand why they did the ETF because. The whole point of Bitcoin was to be decentralized. The whole point of Bitcoin was not to be part of the institution. The whole point of Bitcoin was to be independent. And yet they went and they created this ETF. Well, now you're married to a bunch of people that are not the same type of investors that Bitcoin people. Bitcoin people are very determined, very uh, persistent investors. And now you're married with a group of investors that might be kind of flaky. And that can cause volatility to the upside and volatility to the downside. So I just think that there might be a, a sorting out period here where Bitcoin has to kind of figure out what it is again, because I just don't think it is what it was. Uh, it's not to say that it can't it can't be good long term, but I just don't think it's it's what it was. So anyway, join us on Saturday, Thank eight o'clock a.m. We'll Appreciate talk about it. this. Thank you, Larry. Got it. See you tomorrow, folks. May God bless.